I get questions on Osgood Slaughter pretty regularly, so I'm going to talk about this. This is a growth-related tendon pain at the tibial tuberosity. This happens in adolescence. If you're an older person and you have it, that is not Osgood Slaughter. That would be distal patellar tendinopathy. But we're going to talk about the adolescents, the young kids that get it. The problem out there is that most of the stuff out there is mediocre. Um, this researcher, Michael Rathliff, he, I'm going to talk about his study and a podcast he was on later on, but he has, uh, some pretty good research out there. Most of the research is not very good and it might not be that successful for kids with Osgood slaughter. The problem is it's typical to use the wait and see approach because people just think that kids will grow out of it because it's an adolescent thing. That might be the case for some kids and it's definitely not the case for others. This study by Michael Rathliff, they took 51 adolescents that had pain for around 21 months. So they had it for a very long time. They didn't have a control group in this study. They just wanted to see if their intervention would work for these kids who had long-term Osgood slaughter. So the kids had four visits with a physical therapist over a 12-week period. The parents were, were required to take part so they could be involved in the rehab process because these are young kids. Having the parent around is probably pretty essential. So for the first four weeks, they were instructed to refrain from pain aggravating activities and sport participation while doing the knee exercises, these knee exercises. And for the last eight weeks, they were given two things. Number one, they were given a progressive knee strength program to do at home. And number two, they were told to follow the activity ladder and progression model for return to sport. They used a pain scale to guide both of those two things. So at the end of it, here's a graph. At 12 weeks, 80% reported a successful outcome. At 12 months, 90% did. Here's another graph. You can see how pain intensity consistently declined from around 7 out of 10 at the start to around 2 out of 10 at 12 weeks and 12 months. And at 12 weeks, 16% returned to playing sport. That's not very much, which increased to 67% at 6 months and 69% at 12 months. So there are a couple good things and one bad thing. And here's another bad thing. 18 of 45 considered themselves completely free from pain at 12 weeks which was similar at 12 months, which would have only been 19 of 43. And at 12 months, only 43 responded that they would be satisfied to live with their current symptoms. So kind of looking at this whole thing, this might have been a difficult subcategory of Osgood because they had it for almost two years coming in. But there were some people that responded well, some people that didn't respond that well. The lead researcher, Michael Rathliff, he was also on a podcast where he discussed some other ideas behind Osgood, so I'm just going to list some of these off. He said from a different cross-sectional study, kids with Osgood had a 35% knee extension strength deficit. So if you do the traditional approach, wait and see, they're not going to gain knee strength by just waiting and seeing, so there could be benefit to loading. And for kids, they're either full on or they're full off. They don't really understand the progressive nature of getting back to sport when you have pain. So the education around the progression um, is pretty essential. And there's four people that can help or hurt the Osgood rehab. You have the parent, the coach, the athlete, and the medical practitioner. If they're all on the same page, things would probably go a lot better and a lot smoother. And he said two educational keys for athletes with Osgood. You have to tell them what it is and why there is pain. And the second is activity modification. Help them find a balance from what is pain provoking and what is not pain provoking and how they can continue to hopefully play their sport while their pain goes down. And there's a side benefit of getting someone on a loading program. Some studies on Osgood indicate negative soft tissue and tendon changes as well. So if you get kids on a loading program, that could help uh, potentially help clear up some of those issues. The problem is completely removing sport for four weeks like they did in this study might not have been a good move. Um, number one, the kids get a large reduction in their quality of life by completely removing sport. They want to be with their friends. And secondly, they didn't even do it in the study. They played anyways. They might have decreased it a little bit, but they didn't listen to the advice of completely taking that pain provoking activity away. They're going to do it anyways. Um, Michael also said next day pain in Osgood Slaughter is influenced by intensity, not volume. So letting kids play while removing the high intensity pain provoking activity could be useful. It's not necessarily that they're playing for a significant amount of time. It's that you can find activities that are going to be more painful than others and then maybe take those away. 
And sometimes people will be concerned with the bump. They get a, a growth on their tibial tuberosity. But he said this doesn't matter. It might go away. It might not. doesn't matter for pain decreases. And in this study, there was no control group. So you have to think, were the improvements just the effect of time? Would they have gotten the same results if they had just wait, if they had just done the wait and see approach? But uh, I would say probably not because the kids coming in already had it for 21 months before. Um, so I assume they were probably doing the wait and see approach for the 21 months before. And looking at this long term versus short term, it could be useful to separate those in a looking at it from a more acute versus a more chronic. So the short term Osgood, they might just need education on load progression and avoidance of high pain activities. And the long term Osgood, they might need that, but they might also need a loading program. But just because a kid has Osgood for a short term doesn't mean you need to throw them on a loading program. Because it's an adolescent thing, they could kind of just clear up as you give them uh, better ideas about loading. Um, anyways, that's it for my video on Osgood. You can read the study that I linked and you can listen to the podcast that I linked. Hopefully that helps. Try it out. Enjoy.